Hello, good evening, and welcome to Open Your Mind Radio. You have myself, Alan James. And myself, Stephen George. Good evening. Good evening. It's Sunday, the 18th of March, 2018, and again, we have more snow over over here in Ireland. Um, The son of the beast from the east is what it was called. And uh, it wasn't as bad, but, you know, we had uh, a bit of bad snow all day today, snow last night as well. It's still out there, but it's clearing up a little bit, so it wasn't too bad. Um, a few things that I had to do that I couldn't do with the, the weather the way it was, but uh, yeah, I just uh, I think people are so fed up with snow these days, Steve, aren't they? That's it. They are, yeah. I mean, yeah, like you say, it, it's going to be impacting on on people's lives when it, when it does happen. People can't get to do the things that they yeah that they need to do. Exactly. Unfortunately. Right. Our guest on the show tonight is a lady called Angela Gabrielle. Now, Angela's been doing a few radio shows because of the information she has. The information our, our son uh, passed over, and he's uh, apparently over on the new earth. And um, he's been um, sending her information about what it's like over there and what's uh, happening. Now, obviously, the information is subjective um, because, obviously, Angela can't prove it. But it would be good to talk to Angela, find out what the information that he has and see what he's saying and uh, and actually talk about it because um, we're going to be talking about it later. But today is supposed to be an important date regarding energy. But we'll touch base with that shortly. Now, before we crack on with uh, everything, we'll uh, just find out what the communication channels are. Yes, communication channels this evening are as follow. The communication channels are email info at oymireland.com by phone 046 927 and you can also contact us direct through the OYM chat room. Yes, the OYM chat room can be found on the website, which is oymradio.com. You will see the links on the left-hand side for the chat room and also for... Uh, the YouTube channel for uh, Skype, for anti-social media, Facebook, for the Twitter, and also the all-important email address. The email address is info at oymradio.com. If you want to fire us off an email just to let us know uh, where you're listening from, uh, that will be that will be lovely to receive that email. We also have, as I mentioned, the chat room there as well. A big hi to everyone in the chat room. If you want to log into the chat room, you'll need to register. Uh, Registration needs to be done before the show begins, at least a couple of hours beforehand. So anyone who's going to fire off a reg- in, 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 you know, registration request now, uh, it won't be active till next week. We also have People's Internet Radio. Uh, big hi to everyone over there. We're streaming there also. And we're monitoring the chat room on PIR uh, for questions this evening. We also can be found on the radio... Oh, got it. Sound Garden. Radio Garden. Radio Garden. Radio Garden. Radio Garden. Uh, I need to write this down. Uh, mm. It's a big, it's a website there. If you, if you go to it, you'll actually see a, a map of the world and we can be found on Walton's Mountain in a secret bunker in a hidden, uh, <laughs> where we're hidden. Uh, yeah, so we can be found on there also. And, uh, also on our own website there, you will see the link for the TuneIn Radio Link application. That's a free app for your smartphone or your iPhone, uh, where you can check out us and our podcasts, uh, 24-7. Brilliant, Steve. Right, before we get into the information, we'd just like to send our condolences to Pat Green. Pat Green is the leader of the DDI party, Direct Democracy Ireland, and he posted up there earlier today that he learned uh, of the death of his son. Uh, His friend found him uh, on the couch. He was asleep, and after a long night of talking and having the crack, he was a troubled soul, um, but had a heart of gold. May he rest in peace. Uh, Pat's wife and himself miss him. So much it hurts. Uh, his name was Connor Green. So uh, condolences to Pat. Um, you know, to lose a child it must be heart wrenching, um, and it's you know very sad. And um, Pat was on the show a few weeks ago, so we send our condolences out to Pat there, and um, we wish him the best. Um, but uh, sorry to hear the news. Okay. Um, now Steve's going to kick us off with the uh, the bits and pieces. Yes, the bits and pieces. We had an email in during the week uh, from uh, a listener, and we want to say thank you for the email. I'm going to read it out here uh, for for everyone to listen to. It says, Dear Alan and Steve, what on earth were you two thinking of last night uh, when you introduced the show to Thomas with the, with the item from yournewswire.com about paedophilia supposedly being a spiritual encounter with God? That was the article we actually kind of ran last week. Uh, in relation to the the, the priest, uh, your news war is nothing. Is just sorry. Is just about the most notorious 
of all the fake news and clickbait sites. You can believe nothing you see on there, absolutely nothing. It's either pure drivel or deliberately distorted grains of fact. Uh, and it has only one purpose, to make as much, much money as possible via its sensationalist and unbelievable headlines. Your Newswire was set up and is run by Sean, a.k.a. Sean Adi Tabatabatai, or, or something, worse, like that. something like that. Uh, does that name ring a bell? Not really. It should, he says. He was the individual that brought the people's voice to its knees. Uh, he now operates the site from America, sometimes aided by his mother. Everything on everything about it is fake. Even the so-called reporters who allegedly write those clickbait articles, they don't exist. Unfortunately, the first five minutes of the show were then subsequently wasted with everyone discussing something that just didn't happen, or certainly not in the way it was reported by your news were, and then introduced by Steve. Hmm. Please, remember, please, please uh, promise me you will never take material from this website again without seriously questioning it first. Better still, just pay no attention to it at all. Otherwise, good show. All the best, Nick. Okay, we want to, just want to say, Nick, thanks a million for taking the time to write. Um, in relation to like some of the articles that we do read out, they are sent in by listeners. Some people actually, uh, some of the listeners actually would kind of, Cop onto the articles and then put us onto it. They email us over links. Now we do kind of uh, try to have a look at various different links and kind of sort out the wheat from the chaff, as they say. But some of them do get, you know, some of them do get through because I mean, as as Alan points out from time to time, we are just kind of two dads uh, who go about our daily business, and sometimes it's. Uh, you know, it's we just kind of if someone has sent it over, someone who will be a long time listener to the show, we can just kind of take it as uh, it, it may have some credence to it. But you know, unfortunately, we don't have time to check all the links. Mm, exactly. So, but we'll be careful. But thanks for taking the energy to write into us and to let us know about that. We'll uh, we'll keep an eye out for that in the future. Right. The second article now, obviously, this date, the 18th and the 19th, is very poignant because there's a lot of talk on the internet regarding the energies hitting the planet. Now, that's the kind of doom and gloom stuff, you know, and the uh, solar energies are going to affect the planet and the power grids are going to, you know, any of that is all kind of the doom and gloom stuff. So I kind of ignore that, really. Um, but according to RT, uh, that's Russia Today, a dot com, a strong magnetic storm will hit the entire planet on March 18th. And it said a magnetic storm will strike the entire planet on March 18th, according to a graph of magnetic activity developed by the X-ray Solar Astronomy Laboratory of the Physical Institute of the Russian Academy of Sciences. According to the graph, three days before the storm on March 14, 16, 17, geomagnetic alterations will be experienced. Before that period, the megasphere will be calm. A magnetosphere will be calm. The magnetic storm that will reach Earth on March 18 will be the third since the beginning of this year. The first was registered on January 15th and the second on February 19th. Now also, apart from this kind of energy storm um, that's going to hit the planet apparently, um, there's supposed to be an, uh, an energy coming from the central sun that's supposed to be hitting the planet which will have positive effects on the people on the planet. Um, Increasing our resonance on our frequencies and uh, making us uh, feel much better than what we are um, as part of the uh, the uh, upgrading of Gaia uh, to a higher higher level. I won't say fourth or fifth dimension, but to a higher level. Loads and loads of talk on the internet. Loads of QHHT people talking about it. Loads of people who are channeling and speaking to the higher selves and all that kind of stuff. And all saying the same thing. Well, you know, let's see what happens, shall we? Because we've been down this road how many times, Steve? Loads of times. Numerous, more than we care. Numerous somehow. times, and nothing ever happens. So let's see what happens anyway. If something happens, then happy days. If nothing happens, then we will soldier on and carry on and do what we do. Um, so that's uh, that's the news there, Steve. <laughs> Yeah, we have a, a, just a notification here that there's going to be a talk, uh, an open discussion to the public at the Dingle Skellig Hotel, that's in County Kerry, on the 27th of March. That's going to kick off at 8pm. It says, please tell the listeners and ask them to come. Uh, the hall can accommodate up to well 300 plus people, it says, and one of the topics for discussion is going to be the planned rollout of 5G. So that's an important, it's an important one for anyone who has any information and wants to kind of share it. Get yourself down to that public meeting if you are near that hotel in Kerry. 
Cool, and that's uh, just an info from Richard, Richard Cumbers, he sent that over there, just to tell us about it. Right, how's your week? Yeah, not too much to report on my week, it's been a very busy week, and I have to say, uh, it's been an interesting week. Um, from from the point of view, from a work perspective, we've noticed in work that uh, a lot of people in work were in a very bad mood this week. Right. A, lo- a lot okay. of people in the office were, were in a very bad mood, and I was kind of thinking, what was that date again? I know I know we were discussing about something hitting the planet, but it was the 18th, 18th yeah. slash 19th. Yeah. Uh, so I said, it, maybe it's not that. Maybe it is that. Maybe it was a precursor to that happening. I don't know. But a lot of people in a very bad mood, and several of the drivers who I would deal with on a daily basis, also in bad moods. We had a lot of... Uh, in, in all the years I've worked in where I work... Which is I work in warehousing. It's it's no secret. Um, but this week we had more damages and goods being returned, pallets of stuff being returned than mm-hmm. ha- than I've seen in the past fifteen years. It, it just it, it was ridiculous. Uh, so maybe there's something going on there. I don't know. I think you were surfing the wrong wave. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> the other wave. It was. It's supposed to be a good wave, not a bad wave. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, but I mean, yeah, in relation to the, to the wave, I mean, I've been very tired the past couple of days, and even today, something that I never. I never do, is I fell asleep on the sofa. Um, myself and my wife were just kind of sitting there. We had the fire going, and, and we fell asleep. Uh, not for long, though, because we have a little five-year-old who keeps coming in, uh, demanding attention. Um, but, yeah, we, we fell asleep, and I've, I've been kind of feeling like I've been drained. Energy-wise, I feel drained the past couple of days. Now, maybe it's just work in the backlog, because we're still playing catch-up after the, after the, the, the snowstorm, the recent snowstorm. But... Uh, or maybe it is something hitting the planet, but my energy is just zapped, I have to say. And um, just two other items I want to mention very quickly. One is RTE seem to be kicking it up again. They had an ad running, they're running an ad on RTE television saying that they, they've uh, employed more TV license inspectors. And they have a list. And if you don't have a license, they have your number. So they're going to be visiting all the premises. And um, it did say on the ad that, you know, if if you're... Uh, following a conviction for not having not having a TV license, you could spend some time behind bars and a fine of one thousand euro. They didn't say on the ad, which is kind of a, well, not that I heard anyway. They didn't say you must have one because it's the law. That used to be the the rhetoric they were kind of spinning for a long time, saying you have to have a TV license. It's the law. Uh, but th- I didn't hear that on 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 the ad uh, recently, so I'm not sure. Maybe they've copped onto themselves and realised well, it's not actually the law, so we shouldn't be saying that. Uh, so if anyone has any ideas of how people can deal with that, or get, you know, uh, just in relation to people knocking at the door and all well, this carry on. You can't shoot them, so don't say shoot them. We can't do that. Mm. But uh, yeah, just uh, answers on the postcard. Let your dog out. I know what your dog is like. <laughs> My dog is a friendly yeah. little beast. Yeah. A friendly beast. Because the beast and the beast. Um, and the only other thing I want to mention, Alan spoke uh, briefly there about RT Russia today. Well, with all the, the what's going on over in the UK at the moment in relation to the poisoning of the uh, Russian spy Sergio Skripal and his daughter Yulia, uh, we, we know that this week the government have basically uh, told 23 diplomats uh, to remove themselves from the country. I think they have a week to do so. Uh, nothing back from Russia. I don't think there's anything back at the moment in relation to what measures they're going to take kind of in retaliation. But one of the things that was can also mentioned during the week was that RT, Russia Today, that they, they're kind of viewing RT as propaganda. And they actually interviewed a chap who's actually, I can't remember, remember his name, but he's, he's kind of one of the head guys from RT. And he says, well, you're calling us propaganda. Sure, BBC are propaganda. And uh, it is no secret. I mean, everyone knows the BBC are propaganda. They're a propaganda station. Um, but it seems that Ofcom may be getting involved and they, they may ask RT to close its doors and cease cease and desist all transmissions. Uh, let's hope that doesn't happen because RT kind of, they, they are a breath of fresh air. Uh, and I am saying RT, just for anyone who may have joined late, not RTE, but RT as in Russia today, uh, because they are kind of a breath of fresh air. We all know all stations do, you know, from time to time put out their own kind of propaganda. Uh, so, you know, it's up to us to kind of filter, all out, filter it all out and use our own kind of discernment. Uh, but, yeah, just keep an eye on that anyway. So, you know, RT may kind of disappear into the ether. But uh, we'll have to see what happens. There we go. Look, week done, week, uh, week review in a nutshell. How's yours? Okay, not too bad. Uh, just being busy, private projects and all that, keeping busy. Um, limited time these days as usual. But I did post up an article which I thought was very important. I don't know whether people seen it on Facebook where a lady has been uh, taking cannabis oil. She's six months to live. 
she was kind of riddled with cancer and she had six months to live and she started taking cannabis oil and now she just looks fantastic after taking it and the interview was on ITV with Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby and even Holly had her jaw on the floor listening to her story and the doctor saying oh yeah well there's nothing we can do with you go home and die and she started taking the cannabis oil and um, Holly and, and Phil said well you know if you're taking that at the moment you're you taking that as illegal and um, that's against the law she said well I don't care I said my life's at risk here I, she said I don't care I'll have it now she had the syringe and it said it would last last her about five to six months, and it cost her two hundred fifty quid. Is that, that's all. That's it. Wow. And and now the guy now the, and the great thing was the guy that was sitting beside her. Um, I don't know whether he was a doctor, he was some kind of consultant, and he said, and it was brilliant because he said, well, if you were a conspiracy theorist, you'd kind of be thinking that the pharmaceutical industry won't let cannabis be legalised or they'll fight against it because they'd be losing money and uh, not selling their drugs and their chemo. <laughs> <laughs> Happy days, you know. I'm so surprised that actually got onto mainstream. My wife told me about that during the week. Uh, and she, she said it. And she said it was on mainstream. And I went, no, no, you must have misheard it because if, if, that, was to be, if that was on mainstream, surely there'd be hundreds of people there going, oh, no, no, it doesn't, there's no proof and it's, you know... But it was actually on it's mainstream. On, it's on, wow. Uh, yeah, Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby on ITV. And we, we put the link up on Facebook if you want to see it. And your woman comes out and says, yeah, she said, I use this cannabis oil. And the guy beside her, you know, really hit the nail on the head regarding the pharmaceutical industry. And you can, uh, I could hear everybody's, the gears in people's heads going, yeah, well, like, that makes sense. If we had cannabis oil, the, the pharmaceutical industry wouldn't be making money on their drugs. So they have an interest in not making this legal. You know, you could actually, the, the penny drops, so you he, know. he planted a seed, fair play he, to him. He planted it, but he did it in a nice way. He said, well, if you were a conspiracy theorist, you know. But, of course, the pharmaceutical companies don't do things like they'd that. They'd never they're, do they'd that. They'd never <laughs> do that. They're very ethical. They they wouldn't do things like that. So pop over to uh, YouTube and type um, cannabis oil, uh, ITV, Philip Schofield, and have a look at that after the show, if you don't mind. And um, But brilliant. And, of course, what's happening now, Steve? Now that it's on mainstream TV, what's everybody asking for? The legalisation of cannabis oil. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Will, will, will that ever happen with the government that we have? Because we know about the vote there a couple of years back where all those who kind of knew the benefits voted uh, to, to keep it. Uh, yeah, but that's, that's going back way back. Yeah. Now Vera Toomey has a licence for her little girl. That's she. She does. Yeah. That put a crack in the wall. Well, you yeah. know. And Vera did a fantastic campaign. On um, we had Vera on the show, and she did a fantastic campaign, and she made people aware of the benefits of cannabis oil. And more and more people are saying, "Look, I'm going to get it. I don't care." You know. And even I seen a statement there the other day. Uh, one of the heads of the police have said they should legalise it. Of course they should. You know. I mean, seriously. And uh, again, I was speaking to a girl in work very quickly. And she was asking me about this. And I said, well, the, the problem is, is that I said, most people don't do their research. I said, do you know why that's illegal? And she said, no. I said, because the DuPont family in the early 1900s were in competition with the hemp growers. So they lobbied using padded envelopes to get the actual um, hemp growers, the cannabis made illegal. And they gave it a Mexican name called marijuana to make it sound really bad. And then she talked about the psychosis. And what about the psychosis? Oh, well, that's easily explainable too. So the psychosis is caused by the actual cannabis and the resin that you get on the street, the skunk, because it's laced with chemicals. If you actually grow it yourself in your back garden, you won't get that uh, psychosis. And that was a 100% agreement by doctors that the actual street illegal um, cannabis and the resin was laced with chemicals and drugs. And that's what causes the psychosis. And she went, all right. And I said, you see, most people don't do the research. That's the problem. You know, they listen to the RTEs and uh, they just believe it. So um, there you go. Anyway, we're going to bring our guest in. We've been gabbling on too long. Look at that, Steve. 19, I just haven't looked at the clock. 1919. Um, <laughs> 1919. I'm seeing, you know, me and Steve are seeing these times all over. 21, 21, 11, 11, 1, 1, 1, 1. Uh, you know. Apparently, that's a good sign, but, you know, we'll get to it anyway. Right, we're going to get uh, bring our guest in. The lady is called Angela uh, Gabrielle, and Angela um, lost a son, sorry to hear that. Um, but he apparently communicated to her from the New Earth, 
and and uh, did loads of downloads of information to Angela. And we came across Angela on a YouTube channel, and I thought that would be interesting to have Angela on to have a chat with her and um, see what information she has, and we can give her a bit of time to go into detail. So before we bring Angela in, Steve's going to do a quick readout on the bio. <laughs> you mean the boy that you just told? You, you just well, it's the, did I just read it? What's on there? No, okay. There's nothing else for me to read. Uh, okay, Angela well, okay, okay. Good evening, <laughs> Angela. How are you doing? <laughs> Good evening, <laughs> Ireland. Uh, greetings from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. How are you tonight? Not too bad. Very good. Yes, we did. Uh, I just happened to read it exactly. I didn't even read it. I was in, from the top of my head, yeah, and no, it was no, me with nothing to do here. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Okay, well, listen, Angela, welcome uh, onto the show. You can fill in the gaps anyway, right? So tell us, tell us uh, from the start um, what happened to your son and all that, and then we'll really get into the information. Um, but did you want me to do like a little bio on yeah. me and then leading up to him? <laughs> yeah, well, well, you don't have to do, to do a bio about yourself. If you want to say that, you know, you've been aware of what was going on for the last X amount of years and then what happened to your son. Um, yeah, I mean, I was born in a Christian home uh, where we went to church four or five times a week. Very strict Christian home. I was very active in the choir and I was the organist and everything else. And um always felt like I didn't fit in in school or church or at home. Always felt very homesick for the stars and uh, spent most of my childhood in the woods uh, and away from people, basically. Um, so very, very hardcore Christian and believing in religion. And um, then in 1987, when my oldest son was born, Sven, not Christopher, my oldest son, um, Basically, um, right after he was born, the church shunned me and my then husband out for trivial reasons, and I was devastated. That was the end of my Christian days, and I I swore up and down I'll never go back again. <laughs> and uh, that was actually a blessing in disguise looking back now. And because it catapulted me from one extreme to the other, from religious dogma into um, trying to find the truth and and you know it, which catapulted me into looking for metaphysics new age stuff like that and um i back then in 1987 there was no a internet i basically had to go to the library and even then on new age you could only find a couple of books on crystals or you know stuff like that and you had to blow the dust off it so i brought home whatever i could and i got my first introduction to the metaphysics and new age was seth material and then ramtha which really opened up my eyes and then from there on i got into barbara marciniak which really opened up my eyes as well in terms of family of light and then david ike i did that for three four Four years, I got into all the books and um, Eckhart Tolle, Sylvia Brown, Dolores Cannon, David Wilcock, Benjamin Fulford. I mean, I was going down a million rabbit holes obsessively for the last uh, 30 years, basically, trying to find my way out of this matrix. And um, I became a single mom of three boys in 1994, um, got into, became a reflexologist, and then put myself through massage school with three little boys in tow, and um, also became a home care aide and a caregiver for special needs children. And then um, in 1990, actually, when Christopher was born, I tried to wake people up since then, um, he was born four weeks premature, so he only weighed four pounds, 11 ounces, and we were trying to, you know, cur trying to keep him alive, ironically. And then, um, you know, he was always the smallest out of the three boys, and he was very self-conscious about himself. And uh, we, you know, I tried to wake my boys up with all the metaphysical stuff and New Age stuff and and, um, you know, kind of planting seeds, not trying to convert like it was shoved down my throat w with the church, right? Yeah. I never wanted to do that to my children, just, you know, shove it in and believe what I believe kind of thing. I just planted a few seeds and, and you know, see what, what happens and let them grow. And, um, yeah, so from there I got into, real quick, I'll make this short, I got in, in 2007, I got into the Organite movement and got majorly attacked. I had, uh, I moved a, a ton of times and I had a lot of black helicopters circling me wherever I lived and um, I even had men in black stalking me in a black van with binoculars for two weekends in a row and I called the police and they didn't do anything about it so I knew I was a targeted individual like pretty much all my life if I look back now mm. um, 
And then in 2016, October 8th, our Canadian Thanksgiving, Christopher, my son, decided to take his life. And that was the most devastating thing that ever happened to all of us because it was very sudden and very unexpected. And he was always happy-go-lucky. He was a humanitarian. He tried to help everybody, heal everybody. He helped all the little kids in school, the underdogs that got bullied. And um, he was a construction worker. Is Tiny as he was, he worked really hard, and I always knew in the back of my mind that I, you know, ever since he was a little boy, that I would lose him at a very early age, and I didn't know why, and I tried to not pay attention to that because I didn't want to manifest it through fear, and so I kind of pushed that thought away, but something always told me, you're going to lose this child young and I just didn't know when and how. And so I always thought because he was in construction and he was building big high rises, you know, tethered down and everything. And he had so many accidents. He'd always go into the hospital and, you know, the nurses already knew him when he walked in like, oh, now what, Christopher? What did you do now? So I always thought that I would lose him that way. And uh, he also traveled a lot. So I thought maybe I would lose him in an airplane accident. I always prayed for him and... You know, I never expected him to, <clears throat> excuse me, to take his life and lose him that way. But um, afterwards, when he communicated with me, he told me that was actually written into his life plan. It was his destiny that he would leave that way. And then, um, yeah, so that we could all learn lessons from that. So, and okay. then I got my, yeah, I don't <laughs> So when when did you first so yeah so let's get into the communication when, when how did that happen and uh, what happened? Um, so four months four months after he passed away, the night before I got my very first download, um, I was laying in bed and I did some EFT emotional freedom tapping and some chakra work on myself, which you know according to one of the books was supposed to help with the grieving and. Whatever did I did that night, it got rid of all my pain. And the next morning I woke up, I think it shifted me into something higher, it, out of the grief hole. It shifted me into something higher t- for him to be able to come down and for me to go up to actually connect and make that connection the next morning. So um, what happened on February 1st, if you don't mind me just reading this from my diary, okay. because then you get an idea. Um, on, on how the very, very first download happened. Um, so I wrote in here, um, I woke up with a nasty migraine and I um, had coffee and laid on the couch in the morning waiting for my migraine to go away. As I laid there still somewhat in la-la land from waking up, I looked out the window and thought of you and everything that happened. I started asking you questions telepathically, and I got answers from you. Yes, at first I brushed it off as wishful thinking or imagination, but I could actually feel your spirit, your spunk, your joy, sorry, your happy face with your happy glowing eyes. So I asked away, and you were shooting answers at me telepathically so fast. I got downloaded information. I can't even describe it or put it into words but let's just say that you would give me like 45 sentences in five seconds and I got it all without wrapping my brain around how it worked or how you did it but I've heard about the same fact from so many near-death experience people on YouTube saying the same thing getting tons of information in seconds without knowing how and how slow and tedious it makes our speaking technique look never mind writing So here's what I asked and what you told me telepathically, all laced with your immense joy and big smile and happy eyes. Um, So um, I asked him a couple of personal questions. And um, also, um, I would like to just mention that one question, if you don't mind, just for any listeners out there who have lost any people who have crossed over and are wondering if they can see us when we grieve down here. So I did ask him that, so I'll go into that real quick, and then okay. I'll get into the messages, if they, yeah. you don't mind. No, go ahead. So I asked, I asked him, do you see us cry down here all the time? And he said, no, Mom, it's hard to explain. It's like this. 
we can ask to see you whenever we want. The guides let us look into look in on you anytime we feel like it. But when you guys are crying and grieving down there, we are actually being kept away from you because it would only upset us all the time and we would not be able to heal and move up on and move up move on up here, sorry. So they keep us from seeing that. However, if we and our guides think it would be very beneficial for us and our soul's growth to learn from what our wrong actions have caused to our loved ones left behind, then we are allowed to go into the viewing room and they will pick whichever scenario from whoever is crying that would best suit us and let us watch it. And that is the only time we would see you cry and grieve. Okay. That's so, interesting, um, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, just wanted to touch on that. And so I um, um, asked him, let me see, there's <laughs> so many That's personal okay. questions here. Yeah. So the next one was, what does it look like on the other side? And he said, same as Earth, but a million times more magical with brilliant colors. There's no pain, only unconditional love and joy. You can manifest anything you want only by thinking about it, and then it appears in front of you. And then I asked him, do you have to eat or, or do you have to eat over there? And he said, only if you want to, and if you miss having a yummy meal like you did on Earth. But you don't need food to live or survive. And you manifest it with your thoughts, too, instantly. And no animals get killed for it. A steak will taste like a steak on earth, but it is not made from an animal. It's just your thoughts that create it. And then I asked him, do you still look the same over there, Christopher? And he said, yeah, but bigger, taller, and buffer, with tons of blonde lion mane hair. And he had a big smile, and he showed me the picture of himself because he always was so puny because he was a premature yeah. kid. So he was, you know, his brothers are 6'4", and he always felt like he didn't fit in. So now he's happy he made himself into this big buff, you know, looking man. <laughs> well, is he is he in physical form over there? Like, is he... You know, like you can touch feel him as a person, or is he just showing you a kind of uh, an image of a representation the way he sees him, see himself, but he's still spiritual. He he shows me both. He shows me like the way he looked here with his energy behind it, but then at the same time, sometimes I get downloads and I just feel his energy and I hear his voice and I don't see him. But um, he also did say to me that. Um, they, you can do whatever you want over there. You can shape shift into anything you want to, which was very interesting. So, um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the next question I had for him is, and here we're getting into the big beef and potatoes. Okay. Are we really, are we really stuck down here in a computer simulated program like a prison matrix? And he said, yes, Earth, where you are, is a huge simulator so we could all express ourselves inside the things we have created together. But it all got hijacked eons ago by dark, nasty bullies who wanted to control everything. They made us all into slaves. Mm -hmm. They spread like a dark cancer on Earth, but they are all being taken out now because it is cancerous and affecting the rest of the systems and the galaxies. We are all connected, and so this cancer has to go now before it destroys everything. This is happening now on Earth. That's why there is so much chaos. They don't want to leave as they feed off our low energies of fear and anger and pain and grief. It's all coming to an end soon. And we, we've mentioned this on the show before, that they loosh the lower energy on the, the lower astral plane. They loosh the energy, the negative energy. That's what they feed off. Right, exactly. Mm. It's food for them. This yeah. is why they keep us in, in this perpetual chaos and spreading all this negative news on the radio and TV mm. and, and movies and everything, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's that's definitely uh, confirmed because we've talked yeah. about that on the show before. And this is why they do all the doom and gloom and you want people to be in fear. And love is the highest energy. And that's what we need to reach. But one that once they uh, start doing the news broadcasts of doom and gloom and fear and World War Three and all that, and people are in fear, that's exactly what they feed off. So we need to counter counteract that and then just um, use uh, just not accept to see it again as what we say in our way, and Steve, see it as information and yep. don't see it as anything that's negative or positive. Just see it as information. 
Exactly. And that's what I do now. I don't buy into it. I acknowledge it. I know it's there, but I don't feed them anymore. Now that I know that it's food for them, I've decided a long time ago to starve them, put them on a diet and not give them any more grief and, and anger and hatred and all that and fear, right? That's the big one. <clears throat> Definitely. Sorry, go ahead. So um, the next question I asked him on that very first download, February 1st, 2017, was – what do you do all day? Do you get bored? And he says, no, no, mom. And he chuckled. I still build things and visit people and have fun. There are no days or nights. It's all just a wonderful now moment. I got to go, mom. I got to go. And he sounded very urgent. So I said to him, don't go. Stay for a bit longer, please. And he said, I'm sorry, mom. I got to go. My friend is waiting. I got to go. I got to go. And he said it so urgently and impatiently, like he had to go pee or something. And I was frustrated because I had a million more questions, right? Mm. And um, so I said to him, where do you have to go? And he said, my friend and I are busy building white healing domes. I'm still in construction. And I said, healing domes for what? And why do you have to build them when you can manifest everything else instantly by just using your thoughts? And he said, we have to build them because a lot of detail and thought has to go into it. It's a big project and many of us are creating it together. The white healing domes are for a lot of people or souls that will be crossing over to our side soon, all at the same time. That's why we have to hurry and work at it together. And then um, he actually downloaded a picture into my brain. It's really hard to explain. It's the first time it's ever happened to me, but... I saw it crystal clear, just like a picture on a computer, and it was me hovering a bird's eye view over this lush green, neon green meadow. I mean, such a green I've never seen before. And there were probably about 25, 30 healing domes that looked like white mushrooms from above. They had no windows, no, no doors, and completely perfectly round. And um, so he downloaded that picture into my brain, and then he said, I got to go. I got to go, Mom. I'm sorry. And I said, okay, thanks for the visit. And he was gone. Poof. And then I got up right away and I Googled the healing domes to get a picture, right? And at this point, I have to say I'm really actually embarrassed to say I've never heard of them Hmm. because I've been a massage therapist for 22 years. I'm in the healing field. And uh, I've, you know, we always constantly have to upgrade and recertify and take more education. And I've never heard of these before. So that was even more confirmation to know that, wow, he's giving me information I've never heard of before. Hmm. And so I went online and there's actually a website in, uh, it's called Pacific Domes, I believe, in Washington State in, in America. And they actually have them where you, they have massage tables set up and they heal people inside. So when I saw that, my jaw just dropped. It's like, oh my God, that's exactly what I just saw a minute ago. And so I wrote all the information down. Excellent. And uh, so, that, yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, if you have 20 or 30 domes, that's not, I mean, how big are these domes? I mean, the, the population of the planet is quite large. Yeah, and I mean, they're just starting to build them, right? So, so um, from what I could tell, they hold about 30 people inside, and um yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is why he had to go there, build it. Like, he just showed me a picture of 25, 30 of them from above, right, mm. to give me an idea of this. So I'm sure in the meantime, they've built even more, right? Yeah. And, um, and I've also heard in the meantime, now that this video has come out on other channels, that other people have said to me, I've had visions about this. I've had dreams about the healing domes. And, and uh, you know, other people have actually had visions of going over to the other side and meditation and and seeing these healing domes which is more confirmation for me so that was amazing to get brilliant okay sorry go ahead and okay so that was the first download and he gave me a total of six so bear with me if it's so okay. talked of information um the second one was the biggest one and that was valentine's day february 14th 2017 and um so i basically got him again and I like I said I try to connect with him every night nothing 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 and you know I on Valentine's Day I didn't even try I try to go to sleep and it takes me hours to go to sleep so when I do get him to come through it's not I'm dreaming or I'm fantasizing whatever it's actually like him knocking on my brain saying hi mom 
So he came through Valentine's Day at night, and I asked him, what are the healing domes for that you showed me last time? And he said, Mom, the healing domes are for the asleep people crossing over in big numbers with the rest of us, like us down here. And uh, he called them the Walmart people, joking because they're asleep. Hmm. Um, they will be traumatized because one minute they will be in front of their TVs, and the next minute will find themselves in our healing domes going WTF. Right. <laughs> okay. You can kind of fill in the blanks for yeah. that one. Yeah, no, that's okay. <laughs> but that's his spirit, right? <laughs> okay. And then he carries on and he says, now you and your new age hippie friends on Facebook will not be traumatized because you have been anticipating this event since the day you were born. You came here with that info in your DNA and spread it around just by being among people and waking them up. Um, that is your mission you came here for, to wake people up. And then I said to him, well, so tell me why or how so many people will cross over is it going to be from World War III? And he, he was very adamant and very stern, and he said, oh, no, 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 no war, no World War III, not allowed. It may look like that from the outside, and that Donald Trump wants World War III, but he's only trying to turn this ship around, and it's making huge waves, but it's shaking the fleas off the dog, and the rats are jumping ship. He's cleaning this mess up. They, in capital letters, meaning the Illuminati or Cabal, they want to push for World War III because they are desperate and want to harvest, in capital letters, they want to harvest as many souls as possible before they have to leave. No war. Don't worry. It will get a bit more ugly for a bit longer, but not much. It's cleanup time. And so just keep in mind, when I got this download, that was about three weeks after Donald Trump was put into office, and I had no idea about, you know, what Donald Trump was all about. I'm not even into politic politics, except for the fact that I know there's the dark ones and the cabal, and then there's us light workers, you know. Yeah. And uh, for, for, you know, in, at, at the time when they were um, voting for Hillary Trump or Donald, uh, sorry, Hillary, Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump, I'm thinking, well, how bad can they get? You get, you know, both are pretty bad, and, mm. and I didn't know what to make of Donald Trump at that time. You know, I thought, oh well, you can't, you know, can't be any better than Hillary Clinton. So, I had no opinion on Donald Trump. I had no idea that he was actually going to be the good guy that's going to turn this ship around. And so, and at that point, you know, he was only in office for three weeks, so we haven't really seen any of this, mm. any of the cleanup that my son was talking about. So to me, that was even more confirmation that, yeah, you know, this this must be true because so I just, had no idea. So if this transfer takes place, uh, one minute we're, you know, sitting in front of the computer or TV, and the next minute we're in the dome, will we be in the dome with these people, or will we be outside, Not because we know about the new earth and we're, we're ready for it, we're expecting it, where the people in the dome won't know anything, they'll just be wondering where the hell they are where if it happens to people like ourselves and their listeners you know they'll be aware of it and they'll go oh like, this is the new earth we know what we were expecting it was going to happen Do you, or would we, would we be did he say we were going to be in the dome also um, no, I, from, the, from what he told me is um, that basically the ones that are asleep are going to be the ones in the healing domes because they didn't know what to expect and yeah. they they need the energy work as well, where we will be the one facilitating them and healing them and, and working. We will be the healers in the healing domes. And he goes into more detail what they look like inside. So, yeah, it's uh, it's more the people that are asleep that have gone through the big shift to 5D and didn't know what hit them that will need the healing. Okay. Go ahead. So the next question I asked him was, um, so no polar flip, like the you know North Pole, South Pole polar flip, or Nibiru hitting us? And the reason I asked him about Nibiru is because for about a year and a half before he gave me these downloads, I was obsessed with anything Nibiru on YouTube, thinking it was going to be this big meteor that's going to hit Earth and we're all going to be destroyed. So... I, I thought this was going to be bad news, right? And mm. so I asked him about that, and he said, no, actually, Mom, you need to take the word fear out of Nibiru. It's a planet that will play a big part in the cosmic galactic dance that's coming soon. 
And I said, what do you mean? And he says, well, let's just say, you know, how every August you get the tons of meteor showers. And he says, always on my birthday, because he was born in August. Um, well, take that and multiply that by a million. The players that are taking their positions for this cosmic game, this grand event, Many planets are ascending and moving up alongside with planet Earth. And so the players, meaning planets in the sky, basically making up um, the, the meteor shower, the fireworks in the sky. So that's what he was talking about. And Nibiru is going to be part of that. Now, I, I did say to you, we had the chat during the week. And we had um, the Garabandal, the chap from Garabandal, which is like Fatima, but it happened in the 1960s. And Chiquita, who's one of the girls, said that she would be notified when things were going to happen. And apparently there's going to be some celestial um, event that's going to take place when that happens. So it's just funny that he's saying that and Chiquita and the Garabandal story says that as well. So, you know, again, you, you take these things and you pop them on the shelf and you go, oh, that's interesting. I'll put that, put that, put that on the shelf and just keep that in mind. But yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. I mean, I wrote everything down. And for him to say the cosmic game, it's called the cosmic game, this grand event. I just wrote it down back then. And it didn't really, it's like, okay, you know, kind of like yourself, where if it happens, it happens, we'll see, right? But I mean, you go on YouTube now and you punch in the word event and it's just like crazy spreading. And it's like, wow. So, <laughs> mm. um, so the next question from from me to him was, you mean all those souls crossing over soon is from the ascension process? Is it true the whole planet is moving into 5D? And he said, yes. It's what you and your new age hippie friends have been preaching about all these years. I know you tried to wake me up, and I thought you were a conspiracy nut, but now I see the big picture. All the planets are moving up. We're all shifting together. So for him to say that, I mean, you know, he, he we have many uh, discussions about, like, I was more into metaphysics, and he would actually talk more about quantum physics, and he would tell me about string theory and, you know, spooky action at a distance by Einstein and, mm. you know, um, the Schrodinger's cat, and I'm like, mm. what? What are you talking about? So he was more into quantum physics, and I was more into metaphysics, and, mm. and he did make fun of me every time he'd come over and go, oh, mom, you and your crystals and, you know, your angels and Jesus pictures everywhere. Were. But, you know, we had great discussions about that. And, and so, you know, for him to say, yeah, you know, it, now he, he sees the big picture, what's really going on, you know. So he, was a, so he was a skeptic, you know. So in a way, that's probably a good thing because he's now gone over there and he's seen, you know, what he can see, see the bigger picture. And now he's gone, OK, now you are right, actually. And, you know, many people have been like that it, when they've been alive where they've the pennies dropped and they go oh actually you are right i've been wrong you are right you know over many other things so um that's just interesting that and it's actually you know as i say it's great that he wasn't a a spiritual person because if he was a spiritual person and you came on and talked about it they'd go oh well he was a spiritual person anyway but the fact that he was a skeptic and he's more into the science than the metaphysics actually adds more credence to it yeah, he was, uh, you know, definitely not spiritual. I mean, you know, he was more, he, he himself tried to figure out, how do I get out of this matrix? Because, you know, he tried to figure out his way, I tried to figure out my way, and so we had discussions about it. But for him to say now that now I see the big picture and I see that, you know, what you're talking about is actually right, so that, that was more confirmation, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, go and ahead. And then the next question I had was, what about UFOs? And he said, well, I need another two hours just to talk about them, Mom. I know I always ask you about cloud ships. And that was kind of funny because we went on a lot of long road trips here in Canada. And, you know, every time I saw a cloud that looked like a UFO, I'd always say to him, look, that's a UFO. It's disguised as a cloud, right? And he would laugh like, you're sure, Mom, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now he's actually saying that, uh, you know, he he believes in that, right? So, mm. and then I said to him, "Well, will 
will the UFOs evacuate us? There are so many sightings now. And he says, well, I don't really see any humans evacuated onto ships. Is that would traumatize them even more? Right now, there are tons from all different star systems around Earth, mostly watching and protecting and keeping their eyes on any nuclear facilities or missiles, as well as checking for space to keep her protected. Then they are all gathering here to watch the big show. And I said, what do you mean the big show? And he says, okay, mom, kind of like say you give birth to your firstborn in the hospital and every one of your family members is in that room with you. And they're so excited to watch this miraculous birth because you're all very, very excited for this event. Well, so it's like that. UFOs come to watch Earth give birth, but the planet itself will not be will not be destroyed by war or Nibiru. So that was interesting to hear as well. Good. That we actually okay. have help from our benevolent beings, our ET brothers and sisters in the star systems that are watching all the nuclear facilities, right? Well, that, that confirms information okay. that we've received as well. So that, that's another good po- a couple of points there. Mm-hmm. So the next big question was, tell me more about the healing domes, right? And he says they're completely magical. Imagine being inside an orb, like an observatory, where when you lay down as a patient at night, you see the sky with stars on the ceiling. And during the day at the ceiling of this dome, you see blue sky and white puffy clouds. And he goes, no chemtrails, ma, ha, ha, because he didn't believe in those either. I tried to wake him up about that. Okay. And he says, um, <laughs> plus, um, you see, like when you're inside, you can see rainbows and sunshine. And he goes, okay, mom, take all the new age crystal stores in the world with all their energy, the angels, the crystals, incense, new age music, healing colors and scents, and stick them all into healing domes, then add little water fountains, birds, butterflies, dragonflies, fairies, sparkles and sprinkles, and you get the idea of healing domes. <laughs> so that was interesting. He, he described the inside of the healing domes for me. <laughs> Very good. Okay, sounds sounds good. So tell us about, uh, um, yeah, you're getting, oh, well, you, you, I'm sure you have more information there about the New Earth itself. Um, yeah, so... Um, I asked him, um, well, he also he said Jesus won't come down on a cloud either, like so many churches believe. He goes, let's just say he will be everyone's so-called Walmart greeter when we're all crossing over. <laughs> and then I said to him, how do, you, how do I know all this info is for real? And he says, Mom, I hate to say it, I did lie to you a few times while on, alive on earth, mostly about money and stuff, so you wouldn't worry. But this time I need you to trust me. I am not shitting you with any of this. <laughs> Excuse my French, but that's what he said. That's so okay, you kind of okay. get an idea. Um, and, he, and I said to him, how long till we all reunite again? And he says, oh, mom, time is so hard to nail down for us from up here where there is only now. It's like scooping up a handful of water and asking me how many drops of water are in there, little, medium, or big drops. I don't know how much longer, months, not years, is all I keep hearing. And then he says, got to go do a final light check on the domes, and he was gone. So for him to nail down time was really hard, and, you know, you and I have talked about this too. Hmm. You know, for them to to specifically nail down a time, they can only go like months, or you know, give you kind of a general time frame. Well, we talked about it, and one of the things I, I said, and it's kind of in the spiritual side as well. Over in the spirit world, there's no there's no time, and if you were to put if you were put in the middle of a desert, and somebody asked you the time, it'd be very hard for you to tell the time, wouldn't it, Steve? Really? Just I mean, pull out my sundial. <coughs> pull out your sundial and take a look at your watch and go, oh. Unless, of course, it's night time. It's two o'clock. So if you'd, if you'd not watch a clock and you're in the middle of a desert and somebody said, what time is it? You'd go, well, it could be four o'clock, could be two o'clock, could be six o'clock, depending on where you are. And unfortunately, that's the way it's, well, that's what it's like in the spirit world. So trying to nail down times and dates and all that is very hard. The fact he said that, well, it's going to be within a few months and this is what we've been other people have been, you know, saying the same thing. So, um, again, we, we, we don't know, and, uh, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. But go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, that night he said to me, uh, Mom, write this down, because it was late at night. 
Um, I'm losing you. You're fading and almost asleep. Please write this down before you fall asleep tonight. You might not remember anything tomorrow. And I'm glad I did. So I wrote it all down. And so that was the end of that very, very big download on February 14th, 2017. And then I tried to reconnect with him night after night and nothing. And I just, you know, I gave up all this. And then the next download, which was very, very um, wonderful, was the beginning of June 2017. Um, you know, when I asked him, well, you know, where are we right now in terms of time frame in this event, like, you know, on Earth here? And he said to me, and he gave me this download with pictures and movies and music and emotions and everything. It's like watching a movie. So he basically said to me, okay, Mom, it's like, say you go to an a symphony orchestra, a wonderful concert, and you've gone hundreds of times. You know what to expect. You take a friend with you that's never, ever gone before, and they don't know what to expect. You go in there, and you go up upstairs into your balcony, and you sit down with your friend, and your friend doesn't know what to expect. He says, now you, who's gone so many times before, you represent the awake people your friend that's never gone before he represents the asleep people and so you look down below and you see the orchestra and they're all rehearsing their instruments you're warming them up and it sounds crazy like chaos it's horrible and your friend is freaking out going oh my god this is horrible let me out of here how can this be beautiful i just want to run and you hold your friend's hand and you say just hold on the best is yet to come just relax trust me the best is yet to come and so you calm your friend down and you know the orchestra warms up for 10 15 minutes and it sounds horrible but then all of a sudden they stop and it becomes very quiet and your friend again is freaking out saying What's going on? It's so quiet. Oh, my God. This, is, this can't be good, right? And all of a sudden, the lights go down. It gets really dark. And again, your friend is freaking out. Oh, my God. Let me out of here. This must be like Satan or hell or whatever. I don't like this. It's so dark and so quiet. And then you take your friend's hand and you say, just relax. The best is yet to come. Trust me. Then all of a sudden, a little light comes on on the stadium, on the pedestal. And the the conductor shows up, and he's under that light. And again, your friend is freaking out, saying, oh, my God, what is that? Is that Satan? I want to get out of here. This is creepy. And you say, just relax. The best is yet to come. Trust me. And all of a sudden, the conductor goes up to the orchestra. He lifts his little stick. And all of a sudden, I'm <laughs> sorry, this always gets me. Out of every instrument in that orchestra, millions of little hearts come out, and you hear the most amazing, most harmonious concert ever. And out of every heart in that concert hall, out of every member in the orchestra, comes millions of little hearts out of their hearts, out of their instruments, floating up into the sky, into the ceiling into this through the roof and into the galaxies and just enveloping everything in love frequency and now you hold your friend's hand and you say uh, was this not worth waiting for <laughs> hmm. and your friend is just in awe just filled with so much love and then and i said to my son this is amazing like why did you show me this and he said because you asked me where are you guys right now in terms of time and I am telling you right now, you guys are at the very end of that crazy, chaotic rehearsal. You're just minutes away from the silence, the calm. And he said to me in capital letters very adamantly, do not mistake the calm for the calm before the storm. There isn't going to be a storm. This is the calm before the calm before the most amazing love concert of humanity ever played ever given ever experienced and so that was amazing to hear and that was in june 2017 so and at the same time a few months later i believe jo donald trump said something about the calm before the storm but the storm is going to be for the dark ones, not for us. So. <laughs> okay. And so that was in June 2017. So again, we have to kind of, you know, because I do say an awful lot when you hear people talk about stuff and you hear the word soon. I've been hearing the word soon for the last five years. Soon, soon. 
Um, and, and I know, you know, people say, well, uh, I can't really say soon, but it's going to be soon. And it's very hard to pin a time down. Now, the, the QHHT people and all that have said that, oh, March is going to be the first quarter. This is the, um, this is what they're getting from their patients who they regress. And, um, regression hypnotherapy, that's what the QHHT people do. And the higher selves, a lot of them are coming back to the same information saying it's the fourth quarter of March, uh, fourth quarter of 2018. Again, we're just going to have to wait and see. I mean, we'll carry on doing what we're doing and we do our daily lives and do the same thing and we'll just see what happens. You know, I know Jared Rand talks about the energy and he's saying that it's going to be at the end of the year. So again, you have different people saying different things. But, um, interesting all the same that he uses that analogy regarding the, the birth of the baby and the, uh, the orchestra. So, you know, um, it would be good because I think there's a lot of people out there who are very tired. We've, they've been doing the work for an awful long time, trying to wake people up, trying to do as much as they can. And it just gets to the stage where you get very tired, you know. And maybe the people that needed to be woken up are now woken up and maybe we don't need to try anymore because we've done our work, we've done our bit. But it depends how much time we have, really. That's it, really what it boils down to. But um, I'll uh, let you carry on there, Angela. Um, yeah, no, I totally agree with you. Um, I mean, time is always fluctuating too we're always constantly shifting in and out of different timelines and so that could be it as well and and i do uh lately hear that as well that you know for us hardcore light workers um to to not go around babysit anymore it's time for everybody to take responsibility for their own lives and their own soul and um you know so for us to go around and, and play babysitter those days are done, it's time for us to focus on being the, the lighthouse and stay grounded and uh, shine the light to people that are waking up right now. And so, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so the next uh, download was um, um, August in 2017. And like I said, I keep trying to connect with him every night and nothing happens. And then when I seem to just surrender and go, whatever, he shows up. And so he finally came through again, and I figured, well, while I got him and I got his attention, I'm going to ask him about the Mandela effect because, um, you know, so many people are asking about that, and I, I woke up to that myself um, it, a couple of months after he passed away. So I asked him, what is the Mandela effect all about? And um, I could see his face. He's literally, like, showing himself standing in front of me, and he snickered and giggled, and he had his hands in front of his mouth, and he couldn't stop laughing with mischief on his face as usual and I said to him what's so flippin' funny <laughs> and he said mom the Mandela effect is all us we are the ones doing it our higher selves our over souls on the other side are doing it it's so funny to watch ourselves from up here it's like watching ants you guys down there are in a so-called computer game matrix and it was originally set up eons ago on earth for experience but was hijacked by the darkies our higher self split up into many aspects to infiltrate the system from within to get rid of the dark ones we are all one just think of every soul on earth as a beautiful grain of sand each is unique each is like a piece of glass inside of a kaleidoscope. It is always the same pieces and all contained in the same container. But with every turn you make, it shows a different picture. We had forgotten who we really are. And so we, our higher selves, needed to send ourselves a reminder through fun and play. So we would not feel threatened or think it's evil stuff. We needed to put a fun spin on things to remind ourselves of our heritage, to find our way home. We had decided to play hide and seek and got lost for a very long time. It started out as a fun game, but we, got, we all got so lost on earth. Now it's time to wake up. Now, the reason we had decided to use Mandela is because we wanted to actually get the message across to ourselves that we are each a grain of beautiful sand, just like the Tibetan monks do when they make a mandala. 
We are all unique and beautiful pieces of sand that make up that whole mandala that is so painstakingly put together by so many Tibetan monks with so much love and meditation and dedication. And when it is all finished, it creates a beautiful picture of oneness through love. Then the Dalai Lama will say a prayer, mix all the sand together into a beautiful rainbow pile of grains of sand and take it to the river and dump it in there with a blessing of love that will be carried all over the world through the water. And so that's what he told me. And I had to go on on YouTube actually in Google Mandalas and Tibetan monks to get a picture of, and, and actually watch a show of how they do it because that was more confirmation because I, I've heard of mandalas before, but I thought they were just paintings. But to actually see them make it out of grains of sand, that just blew me away. So I think um, they we did hear, and I can't confirm this, but we did hear that the, uh, the Dalai Lama was a uh, cabal. So, um, just something to bear in mind. Uh, you might want to do some research on that. Uh, we don't know whether your son probably knows that, um, whether that's the case or not, but we were told that through a good source that the Dalai Lama is an actual cabal uh, p- uh, person. Um, yeah, I've heard that too, which kind of made me think too, but... I mean, I don't, I don't know what to make of that now, but I mean, I'm just, I'm just a messenger. Yeah, 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 no, I don't, no, but it, this is, this is the whole thing. This is about sharing information. And, uh, so, you know, if, if you do have another download from your son and you get talking to him, you can actually, you could say to him, by, by the way, we heard that, you know, the Dal- Dalai Lama is cabal. I mean, does that make sense to you? And have you heard that on your side? I mean, this, this is the whole thing. We just share information. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. And uh, so the next download was um, middle of December 2017, and uh, it was really quick. He flashed his picture at me. He was basically sitting on a big rock and sweating, and it was sunshine. He was glowing, and it was hot, and he and uh, he had a, a bottle of beer in his right hand, and he said, "Hi, mom. Um, the worst is now behind us." Um, we're finished building the healing domes now, and we're all relaxing and having a cold one now. And uh, now we're fin- we're focusing on the inside of the healing domes, paying you know attention to detail and, and getting them all set up in there. And then um, I kind of felt Jesus' energy between the three of us show up, and um, I heard Jesus say, "It is finished." And um, that's what basically what my son said too. We're it is finished now. So, and that was the the download in December. <laughs> okay, so when he says Jesus, how does that tie in? Is that because that's what he knew, or from a religious point of view? So he wouldn't have saying he wouldn't have said mentioned any other religions or any other religious heads because that's what he was familiar with. Um, from what I heard is that he's working with the Jesus energy over there. He's working with Jesus over there, the Christ consciousness, not the one that's been nailed to the cross by religion and dogma, but the one that actually came down here to spread the truth and, uh, you know, remind us who we are. And uh, so he works with that Christ consciousness. And, um, I mean, I'm just, you know, saying what, what I got from that download yeah. that I felt, you know, Jesus basically said it is finished. Okay. And do you want to, yeah. to do you want to mention the the um the chess and then we have questions for you here. We'll go over to the to the uh, the listeners questions. So if you want to mention the chess download and then we'll go over to the questions. Um did, yeah, except I got two little ones. Oh, go ahead, yeah, no, go uh, ahead. One, yeah? yeah, go ahead, yeah. Okay, so um, the next um, message I actually got from my guides, which was January 22nd, um, 2018, and uh, it kept flashing through my head as I was falling asleep in big letters, Cosmic Galactic Show Coming, Cosmic Galactic Show Coming, and they you know, said that like 25, 30 times in my brain, and I tried to go to sleep, and it's like, okay, okay, I got it, and I wrote it down. And then um, I got a download from him 20, January 26, 18, of this year. Um, it was really quick, and he basically said the word Rainbow Gate. And then um, I heard a male voice saying, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then I was shown a big uh, black triangular UFO um, from underneath with six red lights. And just to let you know... Um, 
that I got a, a weird feeling from it. It, it. it didn't. I didn't get the warm fuzzies from that UFO. So I kind of felt like it wasn't. It wasn't the good guys. So and then at that same time, I. I asked him um, what was if that was the whole message, and then all he said was, "and cut like a movie director." And then I saw Jesus' face and him saying, "The lion will lie down with the lamb." And then Christopher again said, "and cut," but this time I could see that black and white wooden frame that they use in movie making when they do the scene cutting. Right? He opened it up and he closed it like a movie director, and he said, "and cut." And then I asked him, when is this event going to happen? And he basically said, it's just around the corner. And he had a big smile and giggles and gone. He was gone. And then I heard the graduation song going through my head right after that. So, And that was the January January last download. And then after that, with the movie, uh, with the um, with the chessboard, right? That's, that's the one you wanted, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so that was March 11th of this year, so just a few days ago. Um, he came down, that was the last download, and I kind of got into a place of like, where we all are. It's like, okay, we're so tired, we're burned out, we can't hold on anymore, we all want to go home, when is this event coming? We've had so many t carrots, you know, come on, another date, another date. And so he finally, he said to me, Mom, it's like a 12 hour long car trip that, you know, starts, you start out all excited and full of energy and anticipation. And then, you know, after about 11 hours in the car, you go, oh, are we there yet? You know, we're tired. When is this going to end? And then he says the last hour of that 12 hour car ride, it feels like a hundred hours. He says we are in our last hour of that long, long car trip. And then he downloaded a picture into my brain with um, 12 glass square plates, like like a chessboard, same size, but but glass, and they were all stacked one on top of each other with maybe two inches of space in between, and every layer had different pieces of chess game uh, board game pieces on it, and then he, he showed me from above, like bird's eye view, looking down at these 12 glass boards, and it looked like one big chess game of glass with all the pieces on it intact. It looked like one piece and then he showed me a side view and they were all collapsing like really fast like boom 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 just like 9-11 World Trade Center you know just like poof they all came down and into one piece and then he said to me in big capital letters time is collapsing now and then he showed me a baby that was being born with the head halfway out saying to me that you know when you're in the middle of labor the worst part and the most The hardest and the most painful is when you're trying to get the head to come out and it takes so long and so hard and it, you push and you push and you push and then once the head is out, you know, the last end of the baby is born in like a matter of seconds and he says, we are at a point right now where the head is halfway out and we're almost there and once that comes out, we, it's, you know, we're finished, we're done and the baby is born. <laughs> So based on maybe based on the fact that he did he he downloaded in June 2017 and it's now March we would safely say probably another year maybe if if we're halfway if if half the head is out and we have to go another half then maybe we have to go another year maybe before anything apparently might happen Uh, yeah, I don't know myself. I wish I knew yeah. more in, in terms of time frame, right? I know everybody's like dying to get a, a certain date that he can focus on, you know, to give us another care to keep going. But it must be so hard. And I mean, I just listened to another YouTube channel last night about the event. And she was saying the analogy with a pregnant woman, actually, she knows that it takes nine months for the pregnancy and the birth of baby and so you kind of know okay i might be two days late or yeah. a week over you know within that time frame that you know and and you don't know you don't know exactly okay monday at 9 a.m the baby's going to be born but you anticipate the birth and so you just relax as a mother and you feel when the contractions are coming this is it we're getting ready right so i think it's important for us to just 
go within ourselves and 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 connect with ourselves and stay strong and stay grounded and just feel the energies around us and and definitely contribute to it by thinking positive by meditating by putting love energies into the the ethers into the universe you know and and helping it helping the birth along definitely so. yeah definitely well i will we'll do we'll keep doing what we're doing and i think everybody should carry on doing what they're doing and if it happens great if it doesn't keep doing what you're doing i think that's the best way to to run with it now we have a few questions for you angela uh from our listeners so i'm going to pass you over to steve and steve's sure. going to go through them with you yeah we do have a lot of interest angela i have to say it's um it's uh Lighting, lighting up. If we had a switchboard, it'd be lighting up. But we don't have a switchboard. Uh, we have a chat room. Um, <laughs> right. The first question that we have here is: When you spoke of the dome, uh, when Christopher passed first, was did did he awaken in the dome also? Did did he? Is that where he went? Did, did he have to kind of experience the dome before he actually <coughs> is doing what he's doing now? Um, this is something I didn't go into because it was a first, <clears throat> excuse me, it was a personal question for him how he crossed over, but I'm, I'm ha- happy to share that with you now. Um, because he took his own life, I asked him um, what happened to him and, and also why I could not pick up telepathically that he had crossed over. I didn't pick up that my baby was in distress and crossed over and I guilt tripped myself for months and months why did I not feel my baby was leaving and dying and in distress and so when he first told me about when I asked him like why could I not sense that you were you know crossing over he um, actually said to me that um, when he crossed over he was put into a titanium safety bubble that he was cloaked, he was shielded, because a lot of dark entities had hooked themselves into him, and um, he wa- he was made sure that he was going to cross over to the other side safe, and uh, he was basically taken off radar, and nobody could detect him, and uh, he said, Mom, not, not even you were allowed to, to, to detect me on, you know, where I was, because... You know, God, Jesus, Creator, Jesus, everybody on the other side wanted to make sure that I cross over. And um, so he crossed over in this titanium safety bubble. And um, he didn't say anything about him ending up in the healing domes, but I'm I'm sure that he, you know, went into some sort of healing chamber. So Looks like the, uh, they have some soul catchers on the other side trying to get their claws into souls uh, while we're running the gauntlet to trying to get to the new earth um yeah it doesn't surprise me right uh we have quite a few questions there so we're going to quick fire them over to you angela because we want to make sure we get all the questions done i'm just keeping an eye on the time there um yeah we, ha- we have about uh 30 minutes left um give or take so we- we'll just try and quick fire these over to you steve um on the new earth angela relationships i mean i know you said that christopher he had to go because he needed to finish off some work with his friend um but did he say anything about relationships like with the opposite sex is that something that will be important um if someone does uh, move to the new earth and most importantly let's say for argument's sake if 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 when the event happens and a whole family move over will that family be reunited on the new earth as in husband wife mother father brother brother sister etc or are we all just going to be as it will it be like a a rebirth where we're all kind of new beings um he doesn't say anything about you know what it will be like when family crosses over what what I did get actually a, a quick download um, last week was when I did ask him, so when I cross over, will I be your mother and will you be my son? Because I know we've reincarnated into so many different roles, him and I, mm. in the past, like we were friends and husband, blah, blah, blah. And he basically said to me very quickly, two sentences, mom, we've played all of our roles. We are done now. And so that was very confirming message that we played our roles. And so when it, it told me that when we reunite and we cross over, we are all just whoever we were all together as one. We will not be specifically mother and son or husband and wife. We have played so many roles that 
it, it's hard to explain. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, well, we'll, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll find out when we get over. <laughs> we will find out. We look forward to the yeah. okay. to that. Um, the New Earth, if somebody wanted to get there, could it be measured in miles, kilometers, or is it more like a state of mind? Um, he didn't really go into that. It just, I mean, yeah, from what he described to me, it's like it's like Earth, but you know, a million Newark. times more beautiful. Mm. Yeah, he did actually say it's like a new yeah. Earth, yeah. like a, you know, but million times more beautiful. It's like Earth here, but w- with joy and unconditional love. And so, I think time and space is gone over there because he did say, you know, time doesn't exist. So, and space doesn't exist. You know, they can shape shift into anything, and even yeah. the cat we saw shape shifting and. So, yeah, I, I mean, I can ask him next time he comes through. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Steve. okay. Um, and another question about, um, what about, uh, well, the, the question was actually about golf clubs. Um, like, it, let's say, for example, like if Christopher played a sport, um, does he have the option on the new air to play the sport? Is there pastimes uh, or is it just work? No, I mean, he did send me in that one download because when I asked him, what do you do all day, right? He says, I still have fun. I still hang out with friends. And, you know, he's having a beer with a cat over there, our old cat. And and they do have have fun over there. It's not just work, but he was, you know, building these healing domes for a specific reason. They had to do that real quick. But, no, it sounds like, you know, they're having a ball over there and you can do whatever you want. You can manage fest whatever you want you can shape shift into anything you want just by using your thoughts so definitely if you want to play golf over there you can yeah okay just not inside the healing domes um um, (laughs) um, and john John says it's it's the parallel universe as as from stephen hawking's theory would that be fair to say is it like a parallel universe that that's christopher say um, I'm not sure about parallel universe. I mean, the feeling I got is that it's a superimposed Earth on top of this one, kind of like what Dolores Cannon was talking about, that it's already here. It's just we're not vibrating high enough to see it yet. It's kind of like being between two radio stations right now, you know, and maybe this is why there's so much chaos. It's the static in between. I don't know. But it's basically, from what I gather, it's superimposed on top of this world. We just haven't reached that vibra- uh frequency yet. So. Okay. Um, uh, thanks, uh, John, for that question. Um, where are we now? Uh, yeah, is the new earth the final resting place? Or is there, a, like, uh, as we move from, say, from this earth to the new earth, uh, is, that, is that it? Like, is that where we spend the rest of our days? Or do we, do we reach a point there where we, we go on to even a, a, a no, another planet or a newer earth, did, did Christopher say? Um, from what I've heard of, from, no, he didn't really go into that, but I've heard from other people, because I did ask that question on YouTube as well to a, a very famous channel, and she, you know, is 5D the same as heaven, right? Because everybody thinks heaven is when you cross over, you die, you go over there. And she said, you know, heaven is so many different places and so many different dimensions, and um, so I think what happens is when we're doing this shift, we're going into the new earth and into 5D, and um, it's not just one place we all hang out. It's not just one heaven. Like, we all go all over the place, and, you know, our next life could be on a different planet. It could be in a different dimension. It never stops. I mean, we take our breaks. We rest here and there, but... You know, Earth is not just one dimension, and Heaven is not just one dimension. There are millions of it. So, and I think you go to wherever you align with and resonate with uh, vibrationally too. Okay, that answered that one. Um, Chris is wondering, Angela, do all people go to the New Earth, even evil and nasty people? Um, he didn't really specifically say that, but. Um, the feeling I'm getting is, and also from his download, is that the dark ones are being taken out now. And um, that, um, I mean, I talked to, to somebody else, like Joseph Reyna, and he um, said basically that with this new wave that's supposed to come today and tomorrow, this new energy love wave, um, it's going to be so high vibrating that it's basically going to make the dark ones that are vibrating so low, it's going to make them poof, you know, disappear, like like sprinkle salt on a snail, it's just like they cringe and die, so. Yeah, because okay. there, there are a lot of people struggling with the energies at the moment, and feeling it, I mean, you said it yourself this week, Steve, you're, you know, you're 
obviously everybody in work and everybody yeah. is negative. Now, yeah. why that is, I don't know, but um, maybe, well, people in work will be on a lower vibration anyway because they're not awake. That's true, right. yeah. You know. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think it's affecting the ones that are not awake, yeah, yeah. so definitely. <laughs> mm. I think I think at the end of the day, if you have a good heart, and even the asleep people, he calls them the Walmart people, <laughs> even if, if they have a good heart and they want to help and they love each other and respect each other, they are going to make it to this new earth. You know, it's the ones that are steeped in anger and grief and fear and destruction and, and service to self. They are the ones that are not going to make it. And mm. um, the really, really dark ones that have destroyed the system here for 450,000 years that have hooked into us mm. and enslaved us, they're actually going to be sent back to the source and be recycled. So that's what I've heard. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that's what we've heard too. Yeah. Steve. Okay. Um, the meetings, uh, if we can call them meetings that you that you, you're actually having with Christopher, do does he know how long like he can keep the channel open, so to speak? Uh, obviously, there will be a, a time when the the event will happen and you will will move over. But until that happens, can the lines of communication be kept open, albeit say in, infrequently, or is there a time scale where he kind of he will have, say at some point in time, that's it, mom, I, I can't communicate with you anymore, or or does he know? No, I never got that impression that this was it. And, uh, you know, I still keep getting downloads. And, and it, yeah, so I don't think that's ever going to end. I mean, he's going to keep giving us more information as we need it or as we, you know, what he thinks is important for us to know. So the more that comes out, out of him, I mean, I'll definitely keep you updated. But I don't think it's ever going to – There, there's never the, our connection is never going to be cut because we, we're so such a bond, such a strong bond between us. And so I think that communication is going to stay open until we reunite, so for sure. <laughs> okay, that's uh, that, that's uh, good to know. Um, and where to next? Yes, uh, this question came in as well, quite interesting. What does Christopher call the place where he is? I mean, obviously, we, we, we call it New Earth. Is that what he calls it, or does he have a, a name for it? He didn't really say a name, no. No, he just called it the other side and new earth 5d and that he he's over there preparing it so okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> that's all i right. can tell you no, no, that'll do that'll do we know we're going uh, when name is not important and um, this question came in earlier from moon girl uh, on people on pir chat now i'm not sure of the relevance of the question uh, or who the who the person is but she said has angela heard of nasim n-a-s-s-i-m um, Nassim Hara, Har- I forget his name. Is that the scientist Harriman. she's talking about? Yeah. I, I, yeah? I, I'm not she, sure. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm familiar with him. I'm fam- yeah, if that's what she's talking about, yeah, I don't know what she means by that name, but that's the only thing that springs to mind. <laughs> that scientist, yeah, Nassim Hara. Yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah, he's got awesome videos out there. So I don't know if that's what she's referring to. Yeah, I don't know. Um, well, it quite possibly is. Um, okay, that's. Uh, I think we're up to date in the questions now for the moment. Unless anyone else has any last minute questions that they want to just get in there, because as, as as Alan says, we are up against time. So if anyone has any last minute questions, get on the chat. We're just watching the clock. Okay, um, so that's the questions for now. But Angela, the uh, I have to say it's it's very interesting. Um, again, you know, you've you've what you what you've said earlier on, and we're all in the same boat really that we're at the eleventh hour of that twelve hour trip, right. and we're all. Feeling and tired and we all want to kind of move on and and get it and and finish what needs to be done and it, a lot of people have said it on the internet that you know we are here for a reason because you know we're we're lucky to be alive at this time because of what's going to take place if it does but i suppose we've heard this so often and i'm sure you have as well that you do get very skeptical um it's good that you're a lot of the, what your son has said um, confirms and the fact he's a skeptic and that he, he kind of what he said confirms a lot of things that we've heard as well i'm sure you've heard as well so that's kind of good information um i'm just thinking now with the you know if we get to the end of march and nothing happens at all what is it going to be egg in the face for the QHHT people? Because you're not setting it. You're not setting the time and date. You're just saying what your son is saying. So that's fair enough. Right. But if the QHHT people are saying, oh, it's going to be in the first quarter in March, 
and nothing happens. That's a bit of um, big bit of egg in the face, I think. Um, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just you know, this is the trouble when you're dealing with times and dates. You know, mm-hmm. people will 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 keep you to them. I know. I totally understand where you're coming from. And for for us that have been at this for like decades, you know, we're so tired and we keep hearing date after date after date. And and it seems like another carrot and another carrot. And I've, you know, honestly, I've reached a point now where I say to myself, you know what, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And I'm not going to expect anything. Then I won't be disappointed. Um, I am living right now just as if every last day was my, as if every day was my last day on earth. And just savor every moment of it because I know one day when we're on the other side, we'll look back and go, wow, you know, we were there when the shift happened. So, and, you know, I feel honored to be alive right now and to be experiencing the big shift as it happens. So I'm just enjoying every day I have here because today could be my last day on earth. So well, I'll just make the best of it. And, you know, if go ahead. Go ahead. Um, yeah, no, just enjoy the the ride, and you know, and not not have any expectations. So I, I know what I know. What I'll be saying, what I'll be saying, if I am over the other side and I look back at Earth, I know what I'll be saying, and I'm not going to say it, and I'm not going to repeat it because it's quite rude. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm never coming back here. Either. I mean, when I signed up for this mission, I must have been drunk or something. But yeah, hey, here we are. So. Funny you should say that because I said the same thing. I must have been drunk or smoked something to kind of uh, <laughs> and they and when you're drunk and smoking something and they put the contract on and eat and said listen you want to go down to earth for another life and do something ah yeah okay I should I'll just sign that you know because there's no way yeah. <laughs> I would have signed up for this um so I definitely somebody must have you know put a mickey in me drink or something you know um that's yeah. a, a drug um that, that's yeah. sad do you have that over here over, you know, they don't say that in Ireland. In, in UK, they say that. Okay, um, we say it here too. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I've I've said that. Funny enough, I've said that. That you know, when you look at your life and what you've been through, and your soul contract, and you think, oh. I really signed up for this. Really signed up for this. Um, and I'm sure other oh. people have said the same thing. So, obviously, you don't know when you're going to be able to talk to your son next. It's kind of, it's a look at the draw at the moment. Yeah. It is, yeah, definitely. And um, um, before, if in case you run out of time, I just wanted to shout out a very, very special thank you to Shane Robinson. Uh, he has a YouTube channel. It's called Unbiased and on the Fence. And he's actually the one that gave birth to Christopher's messages. If it wasn't for him, this would have never happened. And I had all these notes here. I kept emailing him a few bits and pieces here and there a few months ago until he approached me in January of this year and said, hey, would you like to make a video out of these messages? This is, you know, I just heard about the event from Alison Coe. And, uh, you know, she's saying the same thing that your son is saying. I'm like, really? (laughs) And so I, you know, we had our first conversations and he made a video out of that on YouTube. And from there on, it just like went viral. And from there, it just, you know, I had a few more interviews and then leading up to yours. So I just wanted to make special mention of Shane Robinson and Unbiased and On the Fence. No, and, that's, you know, all the credit goes to him for giving birth to this baby. So. Yeah. No, no, that's great. I mean, again, it's good information. And that's what it's all about. It's about sharing information and, and putting it out there. Um at the, the the moment earlier on in the show, you were saying that you were like a TI and you had you got involved with the organ and stuff, and we we were familiar with that because we've had a few people say that about the black helicopters mm-hmm. and stuff. What's the situation now at the moment regarding the TI side of things? You know what? Um, it it is really really like died down. I mean, I had helicopters flying by my place every single day, hovering over my place, especially when I'm trying to, you know, connect with people that are on the same frequency, same interest, same field. And I would say probably for the last year, it's like died down. If I'm lucky, I get one black helicopter every two weeks, maybe once flying by. And then I just kind of wave of them and I send them love and hugs and kisses. And it's like, oh, hi, guys. I still, you still remember me. So, and I don't feel as attacked anymore. I used to get lots of psychic attacks during the night and uh, they're 
almost all gone. So I feel like something has been dismantled, like the dark system has been dismantled. A lot of it has been taken out. Um, I don't feel as targeted anymore. And I don't know if it's because it's been taken out or because us light workers are now waking up. There's more and more and more in our numbers and they are being outnumbered and there's more love frequency coming onto the planet. And that's actually, um, yeah, making them leave or make, I don't know, but I don't feel targeted anymore. So, Well, I think you're right. A lot of the cabal have been taken out and the system is changing. Things are changing, uh, we've been told. Um, good intel from inside, uh, thanks to Thomas, um, who's uh, good at inside information and is a finger on the pulse there. And there are certain things, even if you look at the news and, and the certain things going on, um, it, which are happening happening in a positive way. And I do think that um, Trump is obviously still draining the swamp. Um, and it was said to me um, that, you know, if Trump went and sacked 20 people in his cabinet, then that would be too obvious and people would be asking questions and they'd probably think, oh, he, he's lost the plot. But by gradually what he's doing is he's, he's bringing the people in he wants to get rid of, putting them in the limelight, letting people see what, seeing what they're like and then saying, well, okay, well, he's a bad apple, we'll get rid of him and then getting rid of them. So he's ex- bringing them in, exposing them and then getting rid of them. And one by one. So it does. It doesn't make it as obvious, which is yeah, exactly. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying that's a great tactic. That's you know because he is a businessman at the end of the day, and he has his business head on rather than a politician's head, and um, and th- this is what this is what we were told he was doing. Yeah, and I also heard from Alba Weinman, one of her clients in the QHHT session, was saying that. Um, Donald Trump is actually working with the white hats, with the good guys, and he's here to help the planet. And every once in a while, he'll do something really stupid that you go, oh, my God, what is he doing? Is he working with a dark cabal? Because it looks like he is, right? But that's he's actually doing that to throw them off balance, to make them think he's on their side so that they don't basically annihilate him or assassinate him because that's happened before with other presidents, right? When they're trying to expose the truth. So that was interesting. Well, they have, they have been trying to take him out. I think there's been a number of attempts on his life already, but they've all been, they've all failed. Um, mm-hmm. And they can't afford, the White Hats can't afford to lose Trump because if they do manage and succeed to take him out, well, then it's just going to go back to... Hillary Clinton and one of their minions and then the whole system starts again. So that's why, that's why he has to be very well protected. Um, and the same goes for certain other people who are doing a lot of uh, work and putting their life at risk, um, trying to make, trying to change the system. But it's going to take time and you know, it will take time because there's so many things that has to change in society. Mm-hmm. Um, but then again, I don't know where this fits into the whole new world thing because if this energy wave happens and we all end up on the new earth or the people that's supposed to be there end up there, then we don't have to worry about all the other bits, you know, um, you know, the, the positive things that we want to do down the line because we'll be over on the new earth anyway. So, yeah, I'm, exactly. <laughs> I'm not too sure how that ties in. Maybe, may, and I'm only kind of surmising here, I'm only, you know, guessing because I don't know. Maybe the people that need to go over to the new earth will be brought over to the new earth and the old earth will stay here for the the cabal and the the negative side of the people and then that will just go down, you know, a a nasty pothole uh, or a nasty rabbit hole and um, that will be the end of that. So the people, because we've we've obviously heard, uh, and you might come across this if you're asking your son, that... Uh, one third of the population are, syn- are organic and two thirds are synthetic and the synthetic cannot vibrate to the frequency of the organic because mm-hmm. they're not organic oh. All right. so then take uh, one third of the organic people who are awake and then take one third of the one third of the one third who are aware about being service to self because there are people who are awake who are still selfish and greedy and do what they do even though they're awake and know what's going on so if you take a one third of the one third of the one third 
who are service to others and help and get it about energy and about that. That's a very small group of people on the planet who would be probably vibrating on a frequency who get it that would go over to the new earth. Now, if the, if the unawake people are going to be going over to the new earth, as your son said, going in the domes, what vibration and what energy will they be on? Will they be just nice people who are, you know, they're good people, but they're just not awake? Or Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Mm. Yeah, that they're good people. They have a heart, like, you know, they have the, the love energy, but they're just not awake of what really happened around them. But they stay, still made the cut, and the, this is why they're in the healing domes, to probably raise their frequency and get them up to snuff over there, right? Yeah, well, that's that's maybe that's what the domes will do. They'll do the healing and raise the frequency. Um, but that leaves a very, very high number of people on the planet who will probably may may even stay in the planet the planet you know um now um, I, yeah yeah go ahead go ahead um no what i did hear is from one of the channels on youtube pamela erilyn she ch- uh, channels jesus and all kinds of archangels um she keeps channeling the same message that um we were at this tipping point humanity is at this tipping point at 49 percent 51 percent you know back and forth be- between the awake and the asleep and we have actually now reached a point where it's 51 percent and gaining momentum so we are actually on the winning side, and I think a lot of like it's just gonna go like a domino effect, like a snowball rolling down the hill, like an avalanche, and it's just gonna build into this big, you know, love event, and it, a lot of us are gonna make it over there. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's uh, that's uh, hopefully that's the plan. Fingers crossed. Do you have any other questions there? Um. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um. John was just wondering. Uh, do you believe, Angela, that consciousness comes from the brain, or is it external to the brain? Oh boy, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I think consciousness comes from your soul, our soul spark, where we were created originally. I think the brain is basically just your engine that runs your car, but um, you know, your your consciousness is you driving the the car. You know the the driver inside, so that's the only analogy I can come up with. But That'll do. That's good. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. <laughs> so what what have you got planned now for uh, the future? Obviously, you're still going to be doing your your bits and pieces. And um, tell us what your plans are. Um, I'm just going to keep plugging along what I'm doing here. I'm still working full time as a massage therapist. I still do Reiki a lot on people and uh, I see a lot of changes in people and so good changes and um, I'm just like I said, I'm living one day at a time as if it's my last day and just keep myself open and connected to my son and and uh, stay grounded and uh, you know and be the shining light that I can be for other people and not get sucked into anything negative. I haven't had a TV in ten years and you know not get sucked into any negative news and and just focus on on positivity and. And keep going and try and raise my vibration and add more love energy into the universe. I mean, it can't hurt, right? <laughs> um, I, I think what we could do, if you're up for it, is that if you do a, a, get another download from your son, that if we could get you on the show for about maybe 20, 25 minutes um, to talk sure. to us about the download, I think that would be a good idea. So if you were to contact us and say, I'll, uh, Steve, we, I have a download from the son, my son, do you you know? Um, do you want me to come on? Yeah, we get you on for twenty twenty five minutes to talk about that download. Um, that's if we're still here. You never know. Could be <laughs> yeah. could be tomorrow. You know, and we we could be off the new earth. I don't think so. I have a funny feeling. You know, everything will stay the same. Maybe leave it till Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but well, I, th- I think that'd be a good idea that if we do, if you do have a download from your son, that you, if you don't mind coming on and just uh, talking to us about it, and um, that because I'm sure the listeners would be interested. Definitely, yeah. And I'm sorry we had to cram so much into today. I mean, I wish I would have had more time, but I apologize for carrying on. But I wanted to make sure everything got covered. And if I talk really fast, that's because I just tried to squeeze everything in. So no, that's okay. Because well, the, we got through all the. I think that's all the questions or all the downloads that you've had. Um, did we? Did we? We did cover everything. Yeah. 
We did cover everything, and I just at the end I wanted to mention also for confirmation reasons that um, um, I originally emailed Alexandra Matters from Galactic Connection about the download with the healing domes about my son, and uh, I mean she gets a million emails a day for her to email me back right away was amazing, and she said to me that she had a download of the same healing domes years and years ago when she was bedridden for three, four years, that she was actually going to be put in charge of these healing domes on New Earth. So she totally confirmed that, and as well as the uh, safety bubble that my son crossed over, that was the titanium safety bubble. She said that she's heard many people crossing over like that to keep them off radar and protected and shielded and cloaked. So that was another confirmation. And then the last confirmation I had was just a few weeks after I got my big transmission after Valentine's Day there. I had a client on the table who was a medium who works with the police, and I've never um, met her before. And I was massaging her, and I told her all the messages from my son. And uh, she said to me, all your messages from your son are dead on. And um, also, I, um, you know, she, I said to her that, uh, you know, maybe I should come see you and get more information. And then she said to me, don't be silly, Angela. You get direct confirmation, you get direct information from your son. Why would you come see me for, for a medium reading, you know? And I mean, she easily could have at that point reeled me in and said, oh yeah, come see me 10 times, you know, for 200 dollars an hour you know just to make money off me but she said to me no everything he's saying is dead on it's correct you don't need to come see me you have direct connection to him so that was more confirmation <laughs> exactly so and of course when when uh, you have more there's information out there that is confirming that what your son is saying again uh, you know if you're doing any more interviews i'd make that a point the fact that your your son is a, a skeptic and was a skeptic and more into the sciences mm -hmm. Um, because I think that's very important to say that, you know, and of course he said about the chemtrails, obviously he acknowledges that that's going on. Um, I, I, I kind of, we'd like to know, because we always say here at OAM that when we see there's no more chemtrails, that will tell us when that things are getting better. But we still see them. We still oh, see the chemtrails. Oh, I know, yeah. You know, so yeah, we still see them. <laughs> so, and I'm sure you still get them over there. So that would be great to, you know, to see them, see, see them uh, got rid of. Um, and uh, but again, you probably have a list of questions that you're probably sitting there with a list of questions of all the all the all the kind of questions people have said and all the kind of conversations you've had, and you probably have them written down. And as soon as your son comes in, you'll bom bombard him with yeah. all the questions. Um, I think he's going to be busy when he comes and talks to you next. Well, yeah, no kidding. Well, as you, we reached that time, thank you very much for coming on. Um, much appreciated. Um, telling us your story. And again, it's up to the people to, you know, keep an open mind, pop it on the shelf and have a look at the new earth, have a look at the QHHT um, people out there that are doing this, like Alba Wyman, the regressional stuff. And um, and there are different arguments on different things and timescales and dates and everything else. And you have to kind of take all that into account. Um, and there's probably a reason for that. And I'm sure we'll find out, you know, what, what the reason is. But again, uh, Angela, thank you very much for coming on the show. I'm going to pass you over to Steve. Okay. Steve's going to get all your contact details and where people can find you and um, track you down. Steve. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Angela, it's been absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed it. And I know all the listeners have really enjoyed the information. I want to thank you for bringing this information to us and also for your son, Christopher for being obviously a very instrumental part of yeah. this sharing process and even when you are speaking with him next just let him know that we we do appreciate it and everyone who who has received this message tonight will obviously um appreciate it some may not understand it, it may not resonate straight away but at some point in time it will and uh, we want to say thanks in the meantime if anyone wants to find out more information about your journey or uh, the information that you have received uh, do, are you do you have a website or is there some youtube videos um, no, I don't have my own YouTube videos, and I don't have a website, but I have an email. You can reach me there, and it's Gabrielle Chira, C-H-I-R-A, at gmail.com. And, yeah, please feel free to email me anything you want to, you know, if you have any more information or any questions. I would be happy to, you know, email you back. And, uh, yeah, I thank you so much for having me. I was very honored, and, a lot of, you know, it was a pleasure to to have you guys 
you know, interview me and my son, and he says thank you, and he says, you know, there's a big cold Guinness waiting for you on the other side. So. Brilliant stuff. Well, we look forward to that. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's not too too long before we get over there. We look forward to it. Yeah. But uh, okay, Angie, just stay with us there. We're just going to go off to a musical break, and we'll be back after this. This is Open Your Mind Radio on OYMRadio.com and People's Internet Radio.com. Okay, we're back. That was Alan Karna there on the break. And put your hands in the earth. Uh, uh, and Alan actually did give us uh, some copies of his CD. So if anyone fancies uh, owning a copy of that CD, just pop along to the website, oamradio.com, and you will see in the little uh, icon there, the little link for the shop, you can uh, purchase one of those CDs. Brilliant stuff. So great information from Angela. As we said, there is subjective information. Uh, she can't prove it. But then again, there's all there's loads of things in our own lives that are all things that happen to us and are subjective that we can't prove, but we know happened. Um, and what uh, her son was saying um, confirms a lot of things that what we've been told as well um, by other guests that have been on the show. So that's quite interesting um, that uh, the information is confirmed. You know, if people have felt anything. Uh, either today or tomorrow or over the, the last few days, if you have felt any energy changes or stuff like that or seen anything or whatever, just send us an email to info at oamradio.com. Let us know. We'd be interested to know if anybody's, you know, seeing or feeling anything because there's been a big build up with this about March, especially the 18th, 19th. Now, forget about the doom and gloom stuff and the whole, you know, uh, the grid going down and all that. Um, more so the energy from the central sun and the change um, if anybody's felt that that would be quite interesting um, because we know that things have happened and last year um, we had that the energy shift um, I think it was around September and I, I was feeling it really really heavy yeah. and for a few days and I really had to kind of focus on staying in the middle you know not like the pendulum going from left to right but trying to focus and stay in the, stay in the middle so there's definitely energy shifts going on, and it's affecting us all differently. Um, so whether it's this weekend, we've two weeks before the end of March. As I say, I'm not being bad to the QHHT people. Um, they're just, you know, relaying information they're getting from their patients, and their patients are speaking to the higher self. Now we know there's that the powers to be have, or the powers that war have, voice to skull technology, and. Who's to say that they're not using voice to skull technology either on the patients or other people? Um, you know, especially when you channel and stuff like that. I mean, they have this Tavistock, I think, have the technology to do that as well. Um, so we have to kind of keep a very, a very open mind to it. Um, and uh, again, just compare notes. And if it doesn't resonate with you, pop it on the shelf and then go back to it if it does and then see what you think. So, um, but uh, interesting information all the same. Now, um, last year we had a chap on the show called Steve Richards and he does dreaming, dream healing and he does a lot of training with this and he's going to be coming off to Ireland in April, I believe. And we had a kind of, we got contacted by one of Steve's students, if you remember the show, for regular listeners to the show. And um, we just said that, well, you know, if you want us to advertise your services, we would like to check it out for us because we, you know, we we don't want to advertise something we haven't tried because we'll be the guinea pigs rather than telling the uh, our listeners to go and do it when we don't really know what it's about or haven't experienced it. And there was a bit of you know issues with that for some reason. Apparently, you can't do it that way and it doesn't work that way. And um, there's a bit of um, upset on that side. But I mean, all we were doing is saying, well, put your money where your mouth is, which is what we always do. With everything, whether it's the pain genie, the spooky, or whatever, we that's what we say in the show. So, um, Steve um, contacted us. He said that he's coming over in April. And we said, well, it's actually good that you're coming back on, Steve. Because it was a very good interview that we did with Steve. Um, it was great information. And a lot of people enjoyed it. And so we said, well, that's great. Because if he's coming on, we can kind of clarify um, what happened with that. And, and why... It's a case that, you know, this treatment that you can't just do what we do what you want. You have to be invited to do it. So there's obviously something there that we didn't get. So we will be asking Steve um, next week about that. And and 
and uh, I will try and clarify that and try and uh, see what he says. So we'll be looking forward to that. The week after that um, is I wanted to, I wanted Harry from um, you know where Harry was on. We got the the weather modifiers and the translators, <coughs> and I'm sure people were saying they obviously we didn't put the batteries in it because it didn't work because we got all the snow. So we've asked Harry to come back on, and we'll have a chat to him about the weather and ask him kind of what was going on from the beast from the east and then the sun from the beast from the east and well just just a point just something to note that we didn't actually have this snow uh until you start deploying the uh, translator <laughs> i'm not saying you're directly responsible yeah it's my indian mm. rain dance and my indian snow dance maybe was maybe that's, the what, fact. It was, that's yeah. what it was playing the drums that's what it was um <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know, uh, we'll talk to Harry about it because Harry understands the technology, and I know um, there is a kind of another group that are doing things that they shouldn't be doing, and maybe so. Harry said, you know, they obviously don't quite understand the way the science of it works, and um, maybe that's the case. I don't know, but we'll get Harry on anyway, and we'll have a talk with him. And thanks again. We've uh, got a couple of emails in from listeners making suggestions on certain guests to come on. Uh, the show we're going to check into that and have a look and, and have a look at them guests and see what we can do there but um we had a patrick's day yesterday as people know we are in ireland and we had patrick's day um lucky enough uh, the the snow was last night and today rather than yesterday so the patrick's yeah. day parades went ahead anyway and of course i put up the happy patrick's day on facebook just a little logo and of course a couple of listeners saying, well, you know, Patrick was not a nice person and, you know, he's related to, you know, our link to the cabal and da 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 So, yeah, we we kind of know that, you know, that tends to happen. But, you know, for the sake of Paddy's Day, we just said we put happy Paddy's Day anyway. Right. You know. I mean, we were going to change or at least suggest getting a change to St. Alan's Day. Or uh, Steve's Day. No, 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 no. I, have me, I, I already day. have the day after Christmas is my day. Is it? Yes. Stephen's Day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or that, oh, in the UK, it's Boxing Day. Is that Boxing when you get... Day, yeah. yeah, okay. And what's the day where you bring all your presents back to get your money back? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's the next day. I think you bring all your Christmas, unwanted Christmas presents and bring them back yeah. to the shop. Um, so that's really what's, uh, what's planned. We have, um, we mentioned, um, about the cannabis oil, the TV advert. So for people who are tuning in late, ITV, um, had a lady on, Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby, and she was saying about cannabis cured her cancer. She was riddled with cancer. She's six months to live. She went on the cannabis oil and bang, all the, the, I think she only had a little bit left, um, of cancer. All the other bit, all the other bits of cancer went. And now there's a big movement on to get cannabis legalized. Oh, see, there are the good things that are happening. <coughs> and, uh, the governments have to listen to the people because it's so obvious that cannabis can heal for so many different symptoms with the body because it's we all have an endocannabinoid system. So um, I would recommend going over because it was a good interview and uh, the lady was dead straight and you know dead honest and, and said it the way the way she's saying it and the chap beside us supported her as well, which is brilliant and it's great seeing it on mainstream media and we need to get more of that more of that information needs to be on mainstream media. But um, so that's the and that's the uh, that's really it. What have you got planned for the week? Any pl- any plans for the week? Um, no, nothing, nothing. Uh, especially, I mean, you know, uh, obviously we're we've a, a public holiday slash bank holiday here tomorrow, Monday in in Ireland. So obviously everyone's going to be off. Uh, but we're all back to work Tuesday playing catch up. So I mean, unless something happens, uh, you know, this this energy wave hits the planet and we all are moved over to this new Earth. Uh, I'm just gonna look. Like, it's just business as usual. I just say you just have to keep on keeping on, and you know, you keep on doing it, and you just you know you, you take on board what's been said, and and all these people saying what they're saying, and the information coming in. But you know, until you see it for yourself, you can touch it, see it, smell it, uh, everything else. You just keep on doing what you're doing until the change happens, I suppose. That's just the way it is. Right, for myself, Alan James, take it easy. Have a safe week. If you have any information, send it over. I will do my best to try and have a look at it. I'm still doing my private projects during the weeks, which has taken up a lot of my time. Um, so I've limited time now, but I do try and get through the emails as much as I can. Um, so send them over if you have any news. That would be fantastic. Take care. Have a good week. Bye-bye.
Yes, Alan now answers to the to the, the title of Deuce Bigelow, Male Gigolo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right, okay, uh, we're going to say goodnight uh, here from uh, all from all the stu- all the team here at OYM Radio, and um, we're going to pass over to People's Internet Radio. Barry Prince is up at nine p.m. on PIR, uh, so best of luck with Barry with the with the new show. We'll catch you all again next week. So until then, thanks to everyone who joined us on the chat room tonight and for all your questions. We'll do it all again next week. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>